So Bob, we're here to talk about 5G. It's core to your company. It's core to our relationship uh, in helping you deliver great products to the industry. And when I think about 5G, uh, I think uh, really two segments of it. There's a lot of debate. Is 5G uh, an inflection point in our industry? Are things going to change? And, and I think there's some of the confusion around that is when you think about 5G sub six gigahertz, it is more evolutionary, you know, kind of building on, on 4G LTE. But when we get to 5G millimeter wave, the game really changes. And maybe the debate shouldn't be, is it an inflection point, is it a game changer? But certainly millimeter wave 5G is disruptive in this industry. So how do you think about it? And, and, and why, why, do, why do you think it's gonna be a big game changer? And, for us uh, consumers and, and businesses. What we see is that 5G sub-6 is very incremental. There's really no, not much additional bandwidth, not much additional in terms of data rates. Um, but millimeter wave is radical in every respect. Um, we're just seeing the auction 103 complete, and that's 3.4 gigahertz of bandwidth being auctioned off. And so that will support infinitely larger data rates. And so that's a game changer for everybody. For about 100 years, we've lived in the Marconi era, right, where you've got omnidirectional antennas blasting energy everywhere which is very wasteful. In 5G for millimeter wave in particular, you've got beam forming technology. So it takes the analogy of Marconi era was a light bulb spraying antenna everywhere. And the new era that we're in um, is highly directional antennas. So it's really a green technology. But again, the antenna is what is core to it all and that endemic and enabling it. And for the antenna, it's the work that we do that makes this enabling. I get it. So it becomes a, from a passive antenna to an active, almost a, a smart antenna that enables this technology. It's, it's exactly it. It's an intelligent antenna. And behind these antennas, there's a lot of silicon. Oh, now that's music to my ears. Go ahead. <laughs> As a specialty foundry, this is the, the role we want to play in this industry. And you know, we believe when we made our pivot uh, a little over a year and a half ago to really focus on being a specialty foundry, uh, we, we first and foremost set out uh, to reestablish being relevant in this industry, making sure that we were uh, focusing our investments in both R&D and capital expansion on capabilities that were important to our customers. And sometimes it's not just about the features we put on the silicon, but it's all the other dimensions we invest in, in IP and PDKs, certain device types, even full services. Give me a sense of where do you see GF in that spectrum? What are the things that we... Uh, really do well for you and where, where should we be focusing more in the future? What I'll say is, uh, in, the, in our selection process, um, our view of being um, handset technologies for infrastructure, for millimeter wave, we looked at that <clears throat> Global Foundries is the leader in handset technologies for RF. And so you had the base technologies that were built that could get the job done for us. And that was important and you had the scale, okay? And you were already doing all of that. So that was really nice to see and that fit the window. But then what became special was the concept of turnkey solution uh, for an, an early stage company like us that you could had the muscle to handle all of the full turnkey solution to the customer. But there were innovative pieces of the services that you brought out that other people don't have and I'll highlight test as one of them. So I don't know if there's anyone in the world that does um, high volume millimeter wave test um, the way that you do and the, and, the, and the rapidity with which you've brought it up and done it successfully and already delivered in full scale production last year. So there's a body of things that uniquely that you brought to the table there. Um, and then, you know, lastly, what I'll say is there's a trust mechanism in this. Um, Global Foundries has never let us down in anything. You've always met these schedules. You've pulled rabbits out of the hat, right? <clears throat> when we're in competing and winning sockets, you know, you're enabling us the whole way. So the partnership and the trust in it has gone a long way with us. Because as you know, at the end of the day, it's about people. Well, thank you for the kind words. And you know, our business model is predicated on you can't be special if you don't do special things. You can't be special if you, you don't offer differentiated capability to your, to your clients. And, you know, this idea of test, we've invested a lot in high speed test and, and making sure that you, you can't come to a, a client and say, I have 90% of what you need. The last 10% is, is might as well have zero of it. And uh, we get to get, be able to get better at this by having these deep engagements with our clients. And you've been a, a tremendous partner for us. Uh, you've helped us learn and be better along the way. And so I, maybe this is the, uh, the idea of a symbiotic relationship in this industry and, 
and, and it's all down to people trusting and working together. We both learn and we both help each other be better, especially smaller companies like us. And I think the proof is in the pudding that we delivered last year. We delivered, we ramped into production and delivered millions of parts into the field that are that are being deployed as we speak. So the proof is in the pudding and, and it's a success story. It's not looking to be a success story. It is successful today. And for better or for worse, we're changing the industry that's changing the world. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you, Bob. <laughs>